Hello, Portal Masters. It's been a while. Well, that escalated quickly. While I was doing my work on my next Skylander review in the past following months, as well as finishing up my college course that has been keep daunting on me until it's all over, my PC has a system error that prevents me from getting into my files in my hard drive. So I just ended up formatting the entire thing to access it again. It is like the aftermath of the house fire when it's all over. So I was completely annoyed by that. But at least I have most of my files backed up before something like this were to happen. The worst side of all of this ordeal that most if not all of the assets and files that I have recently before the hard drive kicks the bucket was most of the Roller Brawl's review files. Now it's not always terrible, I did manage to recover the files that was from that hard drive, such as the footages and the scripts and the other assets that I want to use in my review of Roller Brawl, but that was still going to take more time than it, than it should. So I may need to think about another video idea to pass it off in the meantime. Then I thought about Ninjini's Rack and Travis Willingham and BOOM! I got a good video idea. Vale, vale, vale. Now that's the entrance! What are you doing in my swamp? It's time to whip out your Wii mode and shake them vigorously for Skylanders Giants, the titular toys to life figurines that glows up when they're on the portal and twice the size as your usual Skylanders. Well, there is also the Trap Masters and the Senseis, but they don't exist here. If you grew up around the early 2010s, you know that Skylanders have made a huge mark and many popular storefronts everywhere else that leads into the mystical world of Skyland. We're not quite sure we might get a sequel considering that this is more experimental than then going off to have its own franchise until we read one of the story scrolls that is known as the Elder Elemental. Then again, it might have been too huge as a subtitle, so Skylander Giants is what they're going with. These hints does not always work in games because it depends on the game sales if they wanted to make a sequel out of it. This one is the exception though. Because Activision. The Giants are big and large characters that can perform exclusive attacks and actions in game, such as pulling chains and break through flooring to gain collectibles. They even have a reasonable amount of health that makes them almost a tank. When I was much younger, Giants was a huge deal for me because of the idea of the game includes a big way to experience it. And according to the community, I was right. It has a more expanded story with lesser chapters than the original. The roster gets bigger with newcomers and returning Skylanders. Few of them are actually fan favorites of the franchise. No! It includes the aforementioned Arceus as antagonist. This is the game that allows Skylanders to take their big step as a franchise. Because Activision. If you play any of the Skylanders games in the past, you're bound to have at least one of them in your collection because they are the one that puts them on the map. However, there are eight of them, one of each element, and some of them even go on to become classics in the community. So, after 12 years since I got the game and later have all eight of the giant characters, I think it is an appropriate time to rank all of the Skylanders giants. Now, just to put it out there, I will not bring up any of their gameplay mechanics and advantages factors into how I feel about each one. While I might bring up some extra information that might help my case, my opinions will stem on how I feel about each one and my experience with them. So don't think that I will favor the strongest out of all of them. At the end of the day, all of this is based on my own personal opinion. So with that said, we can finally make our greatest step into the first spot of my ginormous ranking. This isn't my world. Disappointed! For a group of Skylanders with an original gimmick of being, well, bigger than your average Skylander, I could never find one that I think is really, really, really bad. The minimum that can go is worse is just being under above average, which in simple terms means that they're okay. So with that said, Crusher is mid compared to his colleagues, honestly. On his own, Crusher has a couple of things that stands out very well, such as his gladiator design that was amplified with a bottom pass armor upgrade, a hammer, which is his father's head, is a fun weapon to have for a Skylander, and he is voiced by Hercules of all people. No, no, not Tate Donovan. Not even Dwayne Johnson. It's Kevin Sabo. Disappointed! 
There were also some good traits that that Crusher has by making him be more defensive with the highest hit points in game, and he even frees up enemies by turning them into stone Medusa style. His own game in Giants is to just smash whatever environment he is in and deal a colossal amount of damage to his enemies. In fact, he's pretty much the one giant that has a consistent amount of high damage as I recall. So of course, since he is one of the giants that I got that was alongside with the game, I really like him. However, there are two notable things that are a bit distracting from my own comfort. For example, why couldn't his glare also stone up larger minions? I guess it would have made him more broken to use if that was the case, but he is a giant. It makes sense for his glare to extend further in height. Why does he only do that with smaller enemies like trolls, goblins, and cyclopses? Because of the glare's exclusivity towards smaller targets, Crusher will have a hard time rubbing shoulders with larger predators, like this worm thing that I swear to Eon that is from Oddworld. Lorne Landing, is that you? Did not know they already hired another Lorne in their crew. Another weird move that Crusher can do is by breaking himself apart into multiple boulders, forming a landslide to roll over your enemy. Ah! Unless you get his soul gem that allows you to move around with the attack for an extended period, you will not go far with it. Because of that and how your hammer attack can dish out massive damage and is already a behemoth of taking damage, Crusher's Shishari attack has become more underutilized even if I have already got the soul gem. Honestly, and I know and I am going to be incredibly harsh with this, but it would have been better off if Crusher was only a core Skylander, because that can lead to him being more flexible with more agile attacks and can still dish out good amount of damage as a smaller addition to the new roster of playable characters. Make no dismay though, I really like playing as Crusher in the game just as much as the other guy, and this glare is not a major issue if you know what to do with it. Even if his moveset is completely unbalanced with nearly useless attacks unless you have them upgraded in other paths, Crusher is the good Skylander to use in-game and has a good design to boot himself. It's just that he is somewhat of an okay giant. Upon comparing him with the others, Crusher just have a few things that sadly pulls him back despite having some fun elements here and there. If you have him as your least favorite because of that he is slow, clunky, and not like the others, and maybe have like a basic design compared to the others, I really don't blame you. But Crusher has never rubbed me in the wrong way in the past, and I can say that it's fun being a hammer-wielding colossal that will turn a troll war into a shadow of a colossus for them. Crusher is certainly not a DISAPPOINTMENT! He just has some steep competition that sadly, he cannot roll over. You call that an ink defense? <laughs> hey, he's on fire! And that is pretty much it. Okay, that's really harsh on my part, but by the looks of it, Hothead is basically a ginormous eruptor with attacks that is similar to Sunburn. And you know you cannot beat Sunburn with that kind of attitude. And don't get me started on how he get the oil from, because in his backstory, Hothead wanted to cool off because he's a hothead. Uh, so he decided to jump into a magical oil pool and all at once detonate the entire island. Hey, if it happens once before with that damn Hydra, might as well do it again! This time, put a <laughs> fire giant in there! Thousands and millions of lives will be ruined because of climate change or whatever kind of detonation that the island has. Probably kill a lot of people living there, but at least Hothead gets to cool off with oils inside his body. Was he even allowed to be a Skylander at this point? That is honestly a very funny thing to say because Hothead actually triggered a small controversy with the German localization team of Skylander Giants. The feedback states that they felt uncomfortable having a Skylander that creates a line of fire by spilling oil in front of them and then lit them up in flames. There was an opportunity for Toys for Bob to overhaul him, but due to the deadline closing in, Hothead just got away. That is a funny way of avoiding an overhaul for this character to me, because who really have the time, money, and even effort to go through the trouble of fixing climate change and global warming in Skylands that was caused by this guy? Regardless of how the team felt about Hothead during or after the development, I think that he is kind of 
basic, honestly. His moveset are made up of two, three things. A wide flamethrower attack, oil splotches that in the bottom path, they have eyes. Why do they have eyes? And creating a flamestorm on top of himself. The top upgrade also have him lifting a giant molten ball of lava on top of himself, so he can slam it down to create a large field damage. Hot Hand's attacks are bombastic and he is strong in his own accord. I just not a fan of his simplistic approach. There is one thing, however, that gives Hot Hand a bit of an edge than Crusher generally, and that would be that all of his attacks and his personality has a bit more of a style to it. A strong personality, if you will. He's an angry boy, therefore he rolls with it. And I find him to be a bit relatable because of it. Anger is not necessarily a destructive one all the time. With better utilization and understanding, anger can be used to motivate oneself. As a fire giant, Hothead can use that anger to power up his flames as well as spilling more oils everywhere that coincidentally makes them a bit more unique in the group. He is filled to the brim with oil ever since he came out of that pool, and he has fully embraced that notion. To the point of where his soul gem allows him to turn into a plane that is a requirement for the Auto Giro level. Actually, he turns himself to a bike, which looks so cool if I'm going to be honest. So with a double-edged backstory, both in development and under what it was inserted into the story, and a basic yet well-done moveset, why do I feel that he's second last in my ranking? Again, it all comes down to how I feel about him overall, and while I think that he is good, he just doesn't stand tall with the rest of the Giants personally, at least to me. But at least all his attacks are useful at the start instead of having it flawed by their overall design. Keep in mind that Hot Hair can deal more damage when he puts his enemies in flammable oil. That means Hot Hair can be a hard giant to pull off initially and will need more upgrades to get the most out of the experience. Now, now, that's not a fatal jab by any means, but it is something to point out. To summarize my feelings for this fire giant, I like Hot Hair. He has some really impressive moves, and his presentation is actually pretty good for what he is. However, in comparison with the other giants that was on this ranking, I cannot place him any higher because I think the other entry does that one a bit better. Which, spoiler alert, this is going to be a theme for these two giants as well as one more. At least he has more of a reason to be angry than Final from Swap Force. He wants to cool off and escape the fact that he is a force of nature. Big baggage to carry, I know. And this bike rider gets off of being angry because he's a good boy. If you read his backstory, you understand what I'm on about, but I have a few words for him in the future. Trust me. That small frog is not doing me any <laughs> favors. A beat. A beat. <laughs> Okay, Swarm here is an odd one in how I see him because, hey, 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 between you and me, Swarm is not how he claimed to be. He is a singular giant bug that claims to be a group of smaller insects. However, the backstory debunks this by saying that he has grown to be too fat for his own hive and the rest has kicked him out. Like... I know he could turn to Swarm and other wasps with a click of the Tisheri attack button, but he needs to pay Persephone for that. So, he was compensating that for his name. So, at the end of the day, he is still a big wasp with a neck beard. <laughs> Giants are known to be slow in the game, which is expected, of course, but Swarm is the most agile of them all because of his moveset based around him flying around the area and shooting his enemies with his barb stingers from his hands to his abdomen. No part was left unturned for this singular wasp. Unlike the other two, Swarm did get the most out of this air giant concept, and I will say that despite being a singular insect, his design will let you know that there is more to his strong stature. I think this became popular with everyone because he can be easy to pull off and is great for speedrun challenges. Despite of these claims, I don't think that Swarm was all that great. I mean, he's not bad, but he just doesn't do anything much for me compared to the others. Not to mention that many of his design choices were 
weird to me. If you think his name was misleading, get a load of this. Like, what even is this down there? A garment or a Edagus? I do hope the former. Please don't look up the latter. Also, his moveset, while useful in many areas, are not that creative. A total flip of how I feel about Hothead. I mean, him shooting his barb singers as expected, I guess? And I like how he uses them for close combat with his cross projectile attacks. But his soul gem is about shooting a barb singer with his abdomen. I would like to say this as maturely as possible and call it as that, but the game decides it would be baha funny to call it his butt. I feel enamored by the game's excellent humor. This is a kid's game. A kid's game that has this. Complaints, complaints. There are so much complaints that I give up to that one Skylander. However, the voice actor did a great job giving Swarm such a fitting list and a fun accent as it was done by Denny Jacobs. Considering that he used to be a boxer back then, his rapid voice delivery suits Swarm exceptionally well. This will definitely not give him a higher place, but it does make his character a lot more fun to play around with. Like, how do you even hear a group of them? This isn't a bee, this is a horse fly! Thank you, on, he's only one single insect. Otherwise, we can never hear him properly. In fact, the game will crash if it does that. As much as I bash around his moveset, I will appreciate that it was made to gain spacing and to prevent more damage coming into him, which makes Swarm unique in comparison with the other giants where they must be in good range to attack their enemies from afar. Although, the depth perception did stop his stinger at the tracks in elongated distance. I guess in retrospect, it did give me an overall look of Swarm and how he manages to make me appreciate him, just like how I did it with the previous entries. Unfortunately, like before, Swarm was just too easy to play around with and may not provide much of a challenge to me. Yes, it did buff him up from the previous boss for me, but it's just not enough for him to be in one of the greats like many other rank he usually do. And this is quite flexible, so of course I'm gonna have to judge him with the rest of them. Despite his placement, I think that Swarm is still very good with his projectiles and his flight ability to get through the level. It really stung that Swarm did not fly further than how I like him, but as an Air Skylander in Giants that I can use over Jetpack at any given opportunity, he can rest knowing that I do not think any ill will towards this singular giant lost person that his family wants nothing to do with except that they can for some reason. Their relationship is complicated, I know. Oh damn. So, of all the generic items that turns into big, we got a rock, a volcano, and a wasp. Who else is there? I know. What about a f robot that could shoot bullets that was from his fingertips, shoot lasers that was from his eyes, and rockets that came out of his back that will blow up anyone that was targeted? Does that sound like a kid that would make this robot character idea? Well, you are in luck, because... We should take this kid over to a psychiatrist before he turns nasty. Bouncer is pretty much of what you expect of him, and coming from an element that has and always will be filled with robots and robotic hybrids from left to right, he would fit right at home. I mean, I would take him home back to Skylands if only his <coughs> toy works on the portal. Yes, this is a nearly faulty one that I have for more than a decade, and I have no idea why he only works on the portal's border. I mean, he works, but he still wouldn't light up properly. WAIT THE F*** UP! <laughs> On this ranking, Bouncer is like an intersize what makes it either a good or a great giant, because admittedly, he has some solid attacks and a simple yet effective design. While he could be just a trigger-happy wannabe that happens to be a giant robot, it later opens up his potential, such as getting the soul gem that allows him to charge up his hands to transform them into big fists. However, the one attack that I think have Bouncer higher for me would be his secondary attack, where he can shoot up a missile from his shoulders after targeting his enemies. It will leave you vulnerable at first because you have to hold the button and stay still to target more than one enemy, but once you release it, the missiles will fly up and detonate on top of their little heads, filling up your dopamine measures. 
Even pressing the missile button as you run deliver one missile behind you as you try and scram, and it is just as effective and ridiculously hilarious. His cesarean attack, his eye beam, is... alright. Much more flexible than the previous examples, so I think that is something he can do. Although we do know who done the eye beam thing better. Robot. His backstory is also charming because he used to be a robot ball player and has a great career from it until he was converted into a security robot for the Archeans. That is, until he noticed that the Mabu, most of which are his fan base, was taken to be slaves for the Archeans. So he has decided to retaliate his robotic overlords and join the Skylanders giants that will no doubt eventually turn him into a near broken toy. Now I know what you got all are thinking. What is it that makes Bouncer great despite only making around the halfway mark? While I think that Bouncer is a fun giant in the game and did open many of his powerful attacks, but in comparison with the later entries, Bouncer's quotes tend to grate on me just a little bit. I have no qualms against Bumper Robinson as he did a great job here, but I am not a fan of the sound designer implementing a robotic filter onto Bouncer's this time around. It is great with the previous Tech Skylanders, but they must have butched it up here. Not Mark Hill Malfour kind of bad, but it is still distracting. Another critique is that because Bouncer is considered a great range attacker that has a bomb on the moveset and little to no weaknesses, it can make him more broken to play in adventure mode and even more repetitive. I would naturally pick characters that allows the player to pick up, but also test their mental capabilities on the knowledge of using their best skills. Regardless of what I say, Bouncer is still fun, capable, and presented in a way that anyone can enjoy. Which is something that he really needs considering that he was also advertised the hell out of the game's promotions. Bouncer was even released in the first wave alongside with Kevin Sabo and one singular wasp. I know there are some critiques that I have made, but these are just the kind of critiques that I must dig around on my own because Bouncer is a solid addition to the tech element to a T. He is a fun Skylander to play around in Giants and Onward, has some of the most explosive attacks imaginable, and call me a hypocrite for saying this, but I find myself being addicted to Bouncer while playing through the game for a review. Which is something that I felt nothing from the previous entries, and a lot more in the later entries. Let us admit it, we know that Bouncer is all show with little to no errors to speak of, and that is more of a reason to have him playable even after a decade later. That must have been a damn miracle for this Bouncer, he was just a bounce away from death. Although, considering that he only works on the portal's border, I was only fearing the worst for him. I'm going to jump! Do a flip! Well, it looks like we made it halfway. The microphone is back. We just made it to the middle point of this ranking. You know what that means? That means I can list up all of the giant variants that this game has to offer. Now keep in mind that I don't have all of the giant variants, I have yet to get Legendary Bouncer, so I may not get all of the gameplay that was on Bouncer at the moment. Let's just start off a little with the fourth place that goes to Legendary Bouncer. Compared to the other three giants variants and many variants in general, Legendary Bouncer just drops the legendary status by its bland blue color schemes. Now, it is not like a blue overtone can never work, as I did like the golden head and lightning bolts that signifies a powerful presence within him, but I would have wished Bouncer's colors were much more brighter instead of having them look washed out on this blue color overcoat. When Trigger Happy, Slam Bam, and Jawbreaker can pull it better than you did, you must have done something wrong. In third place is Gnarly Tree Rex. It is like Bouncer as he uses the blue color for his color schemes that is like an alternative to his original red, but he certainly makes up for that darker colorization with changing his wood color from spruce to oak, your mutated green eyes that is the sharp and distinct contrast to the pool of waters that his original eyes represent, and the orange sap cannon that can shoot out green mucus makes him more of a threat towards anyone that comes near him. He was originally an exclusive to the console bundles before he gets his own single pack at the end of the game's lifespan. And frankly, this might have sold me on the variant alone. 
In fact, this variant was so good and so amazing for Tree Rex that even Barkley gets gnarly as well. Did I mention that the Giants had their mini counterparts? That, that, that was a thing in Giants too, but I just wanted to mention it. Don't you f ask me to include the minis as well, they don't count! Second to first is Scarlet and Genie, and it is an absolute treat to my eyes as the red colors with the brighter turquoise skin tone bounce up to me in such a spectacular way. Not only the Scarlet jumpsuit makes her stand out along with her golden blaze, but Ninjini's color red symbolizes both good luck and passion, which fits the bold approach for Ninjini thematically. The original purple has that subdued hue that fits in line with the wisdom and knowledge symbolism of the magic element, but Scarlet and Ninjini takes on a different tone that will make her look aggressive, powerful, and bloodlust. For a variant that invert their colors from head to toe, Ninjini is gorgeously awesome with it. Finally, even if he dead last in my general ranking, we have Granite Crusher. These three giants have the best variants in the entire franchise, but Granite Crusher has managed to make this design pop out more prominently than he has any right to be. By having his green crystal change into blue and giving his rocky texture a granite shade, he abolishes the other variants in comparison because it honestly makes Crusher looks even better. Let's just say that even I do not find Crusher to be amazing at first, this variant has certainly made me appreciate him so much. Admittedly, Giants has certainly made a lot of great variants, including Royal Double Trouble. Crusher's granite composition is definitely one of them. Okay, we got the variants out of the way. Let's carry on with the rest of the four whiz. Has anyone seen Thumpback? He's up there! If there is any giant that makes the greatest impression to me compared to everyone else, it would be Thumpback. My lord, he has such a bellowing voice, and he have used that proudly. Hail to the wind! Thumpback was creatively voiced by the energized yet elegant voice actor known as Daniel Neal, also known as Daniel, who have done nothing other than Thumpback. In fact, I could not really find any information on what else he does. Maybe he's just part of the Toys for Bob team and decided that, that this would be the enough voicing for him. Well, if you want to start with something, might as well go big and walk away. But is having a multiple fun quotes and a prominent roaring voice the only thing that makes Thumpback a great giant? The answer is a resounding no. Thumpback has a unique kind of style that has a combination of getting close with a splash with his belly slide and aim long by swinging his anchor around. Due to his high on life at the sea, I believe he's just doing all of it for the funnies. Funback even munched down on his enemies at the Tishari attack in a hope of eating them. That is <laughs> hilarious. His design of a humongous whale that has an anchor around his bicep that he can throw around and create whirlpool is the kind of design that you would expect from a water giant. And I think Toys Bob did more than what the concept describes Funback to make him more memorable. I mean, a voice done heavy lifting for him, like seriously. Where did Daniel Neal quit while he's ahead? Other than that, his moveset is fun to utilize as your giant character because it can work with multiple situations. If you see trolls crossing the street, you run them over. These cupid butts that are always too far away, hit them with an anchor. Even as small as creating a whirlpool from his combos is enough for Thumpback to gain just the amount of range to be a great Skylander. Not to mention he's a water element and I am all for that. Thumpback's backstory is also fun to read through as it's about Thumpback being part of the pirate crew that funny enough was run by this muppet of a pirate leader. <laughs> Thumpback then decides to fish because he can. 
Japan and gets swept away while the crew gets exiled before the plot of the 3DS game port. He then joins the Skylander Giants to take on the Archeans and the rest is history. History as in he got swept away like the rest of the Giants and not been seen for 10,000 years. I just realized how messed up this is, 10,000 years for taking on the Lord of the Archeans. And he's like the recent one, so that's kind of <laughs> Like, I don't even know what else to add that makes things complicated on my opinions. Funback is such a fun character to play around with in the game. I often mimic many of his quotes while playing the game as him. He does not have any glaring issues that didn't have his gameplay wise, but at the same time, nothing that is amazing necessarily. What Funback is, to me, is a solid, great, fun water Skylander that happens to be a blimp of a whale. And I think that is all you need, honestly. I'm going to watch you 24-7, 365, until you die. The two-in-one Skylanders, which has become a theme in the Undead and Giants, Eyebrawl is one of those Skylanders that I thought he was weak both in design and by his brawler style moveset with the manual spy copter for the eye. I have heard multiple sources saying that he's one of the giant of all time, and like many other undead Skylanders, I tend to find him to be... meh? It's already sad enough that undead is one of my least favorites, but also having a giant that looks like this? I, I, I don't even like it in the first place. Doesn't change the fact that I have them while he was released, but still. He is certainly not my most hated Skylander, but he does not do much to me to give him a second chance in the past. Then years roll by after getting Eyebrawl, I played him around a few bits, and I just noticed that he is indeed voiced by Travis Williamham. That seriously scaled him up to the high place for me. Nah, I'm just kidding. It is not the voice actor that made Eyebrawl great. It's actually everything else. As I've grown to realize that this is indeed a two-in-one character like Fright Rider, it allows Eyebrawl to gain a following for most people. That I can see why, as I think that Eyebrawl's simplistic moveset is unique enough to warrant his inclusion, such as utilizing both his fists both in control and in flight mode. In flight mode, they can defeat their enemies by using the Femto Eye Laser Surgery. Oh, for f**k's sake, did I actually reference Femto? Oh my god. Saying all of this may not be enough to place him as one of the greatest for me, but what I really like about Eyebrawl that I failed to notice is that his design and moveset corresponds with one another perfectly. The eye cannot speak, so it let the body do the talking for it both metaphorically and figuratively. While the body can whip out a great amount of damage with multiple combos that involves, uh... This that looks like they just tapped themselves together with Tether Gong. Okay. Even the backstory backs this up by having them being enemies at first, but then one realizes how futile it is and said to the eye, Hey, I have a date coming up, and she saw that having a pelvis of a face looks weird, and I really want to kiss at the end of it all. Can you help a bro out here, please? Although, that does begs the question. If both I and Brawl are both sentient and can function individually, who can speak? I does not have a mouth, but that does not mean it can speak telekinesis to everyone. No wonder your mom finds him hard to understand too. Just an editor's note, it's actually the eye that does the talking according to references. I was just making light out of this from ignorance. However, if I have known about it before all this, you will never get to hear this your mom joke. Thank you for watching. Like fun pack, Travis' execution of many of Eyebrow's quotes is excellent as he puts on that Russian accent to further amplify Eyebrow's weird yet eccentric personality. Upon realizing that the undead element is not all what is cracked up to be with less than amazing representations in my opinion, I mean, what the hell is up with Cinder aside being female Sparrow and Dawn of the Dragon? But I am glad that in the later games, it did get some proper recognition, and having Eyebrawl as one of the best is enough for me to say that he's a great giant. 
It may take me some time to get used to him fully, but even with a disturbing design and basic attacks in mind, I brawl execute this 2-in-1 deal tremendously. Also, there was going to be another design for an undead giant that looks too much like Chop Chop. <laughs> Thank goodness they never repeat the same design here, because that would have been too stupid to... What well, yeah. did that in Trap Team? At least Crypt King is also cool. His Nitrofarian sucks, though. I wish for you to be human! Oh, wait, what? Ooh. Free, I said the word was free, not human! I am going to be honest. These two giant characters are amazing. It takes a good while to juggle them around to see who is my most favorite giant is. However, it all comes down to one denominator that I felt could signify their stance on the last two spots. Although, I feel that Najini belong in second place for me. But that was a very difficult decision and not because I am a total genie simp. Let me explain. There is no denying that Ninjini is an unpopular choice because many similar rankings have put Ninjini dead last. But I have a logical, relevant, and non-sensual reason for that idea to put her as one of my favorites. I will start right now that thank Eon I did, otherwise this will progressively turn into a CyberSpark review. For one, I love the idea of having a magic giant as a giant ninja genie hybrid that hides inside her ironic prison for safety while tackling back. It's such a really great concept, and giving her a dual katana only adds in more awesomeness to her. Her backstory is also very good, with Ninjini being a victim of jealousy of an evil sorceress that encased her in that same bottle for 10,000 years. Better late than never, I suppose. Here comes another editor's note. Ninjini did not get stuck for 10,000 years. I must have swapped certain time skips around. Because what is the point of joining with the giants only to get swept from Skylands for another 10,000 years? That makes no sense. After her release, Ninjini is not out there to grant anyone's wishes. She is there to grant their last wishes. Oh no! Her catchphrase should never hit as hard as it did. And Laura Bailey, who happens to be Travis Willingham's wife, bonus points there, did an amazing job bringing Ninjini to life with such a cheerful yet cocky personality. I mean, you cannot guess why she was imprisoned in the first place, but she is such an endearing design and charisma that goes hand in hand together. Plus, her moveset is great too, making her become all up close, far range, and defensive, all in one bottle of bang. Like how I felt about Sprocket in my review of her, Ninjini is another character that I think many does not give her any credit because she has some of the most useful utility on her side. Her bottle can burst out both rockets and magic steam to halt enemies attacking you. The bottom path opens up a great defense strategy that utilizes the logical defense buff when hiding inside her bottle. And of course, the top upgrade path introduces Ninjini's flexible range combos on her dual katanas. She did what Swarm did, but she did it better. If there were a few things that I must criticize her on, a few would have been some mispotential of some of her attacks. For instance, why could Ninjini's bottle not reflect damage onto her enemies? Yeah, she also got the rockets here and there, and her defense buff is also fine too, but an upgrade that makes her stronger with a more reflective coat would have made it a lot more fascinating. I guess it would have made her a bit more overpowered to the point that her where it started ruining the fun for everyone, but that's wishful thinking. You know what guys, you can go. Also, Ninjini's juggling balls, while having good intentions, can be unreliable sometimes. It is made to be more magical and can aim well if you know what you are, but an upgrade that can make the ball more approachable towards your enemies would have been much appreciated. These criticisms that I have right here were honestly nitpicks on my part. I cannot find any negative and crucial part in Ninjini that I think is bad. Except that Ninjini is slow like everyone else said. Well duh, she is a giant, of course she will go slow. It's, it's just, just your, your mind playing tricks on you have to play the first step. She is the last giant to be released before Swap Force. Ninjini's having what Sunburn is having, guys. 
Grow the f*** up. Overall, Ninjini is not only stands the test of time of making herself spontaneous as a more agile and all-rounded giant, but she has certainly made me appreciate her a bit more than how I did several years ago. I love her design, her voice and personality fits like a glove, she can prove the haters wrong with her flexible yet advanced way to pull off attacks, and most importantly, remain a vital representation of a magic element in the franchise. Good or bad, I believe that Ninjini was mentioned a lot when it comes to the Magic Skylanders characters. While she may be more difficult to play around with compared to the others, but personally, that one makes her my favorite character at the end of the day. Regardless of how this may come out as a shock, Ninjini is still a great character to play around with, even to this day. Platonically. However, that leaves an unimportant conundrum. Who is the... Oh yeah. How, and I mean how, can I not have a ranking about the Elder Elemental Elitist without placing the one that started it all, on not only in higher spots, but tots the entire ranking. Complete opposite to Ninjini, this seems to have a popular choice for the higher spots for every Skylander ranking video I can find. There are some giants that did achieve the high points because one's favoritism or think that are outstanding gameplay wise, but personally, I think that without any form of bias, T-Rex is the pure embodiment of humongous proportions. This poster chat was seriously one of the first things that everyone came to mind when the topic of Skylander was brought around. Somebody was also talking about somewhere, notably when I was around the conversation, but he is always up topic no matter what. Torch Bob has certainly struck gold by having Tree Rex as the Portal Master's go-to giant character with his intimidating yet pleasant personality, attacks that can get enemies from afar and close range, and yes, we cannot go on another minute of Tree Rex without him shutting up TIMBER after a good charge. So, what makes Tree Rex so special to me compared to the others, especially Ninjini, since he has some great contenders? I think that it is easy to say that he is, while being all rounded, can be played by a beginner, and that allows everyone to play with him easy to get all of the collectibles. Tree Rex performs a charge, which is then led a timber like slam in one upgrade path, shoot up radioactive lasers from his arm, and has a woodpecker friend to aid on his adventures. Although some say that this woodpecker does more than a good job. I tore him limb from limb! Tree Rex just builds in the giant experience to gain knees for his consumers. Not only that, many players, especially veteran Portal Master, will have an easier time using him since he is the first giant that everyone has when having the game for the first time. What makes him so iconic, even if you don't take his gameplay to his account, is that notably, his strong and memorable personality was boosted by Kevin Michael Richardson's performance, who also did some smash in the previous game. And let me tell you, he does not waste a breath in this one. He enjoys every minute playing as this huge, large, demonic ant. And in return, why would anybody not use a huge, large, demonic ant? You just cannot. Screw whatever Chaos says about the trees, trees are awesome. Like I said about Ninjini, I find Tree Rex very hard to compare with the previous contender, especially with her, because both are, to me, my most used giants. But ultimately, the major factor that has Tree Rex be the genuine case of deserving the top spot would be how objectively perfect this Skylander is. Ninjini can be very hard to pull up personally by multiple people, which has led to many people to have their own opinions of her being slow or hard to use. But Tree Rex is beginner friendly and is the one that has the best attacks, the best quotes, an iconic design, and has one hell of a backstory. Tree Rex was birthed out of natural justice, even since he was a giant tree that got mutated by the chemicals from the nearby Archean factory. Nature calls for vengeance, and Tree Rex is happy to provide. Ninjini's origins is about her being in victim of circumstances. 
while Tree Rex was born to do something that Eagle protesters rarely, but almost never tried to do themselves. Do something about the environment. Not only that Tree Rex made an excellent representation of both as a life element Skylander and as a giant all the way, but he has also made it by many to be everyone's favorite list. I know it might be cliche and predictable to declare this poster boy of the Giants the best one ever, but Tree Rex is just too iconic and too good to drop down to even towards the first half. Tree Rex certainly took it for a great reason and made himself to be not only the best giant in my personal opinion, but also one of the best Skylanders in the entire catalog. Even when no one's around when the tree falls, they do not need to hear Tree Rex being the best, they know it. And including me. And that is it! All 8 giants of one video, and I did have a blast of getting them all ranked. While I think about doing more of this again in the future, I could and I would love to. But that is certainly going to take a bit longer before I get this one done again. Especially when the sequel actually have rosters that are double than this amount. However, as extensive as my ranking can be, that does show how Skylanders Giants still manage to stand the test of time. I would not call it a masterpiece, but it is indeed the biggest key that will open the hallway to Toys for Bob's legacy. You can tell that they have taken the time to make sure that every giant character and newcomer were unique and memorable right down to their gameplay, and their game is no different. I could talk more about how successful the Giants and Skylander Giants are on their own, but as of now, I don't think it is reasonable to do it after going through all 8 of the Giants, because that is only scratching half of what makes the game so good. Even if I don't play the Giants in the same game much, they are just as reasonably important than ever compared to the other gimmick Skylanders, and I think this ranking proves it. What else is there to say everyone? Regardless of what they would be on certain spots, they are just as great as they ever were a decade later. I have played these characters more times than I can count in the past, and inevitably, I will play them again in other games in the future. At least they don't have to wait another 10,000 years for every Portal Masters to take full attention to these characters, and giving them another shot like what I did here. They are truly too big to fail. Speaking of future, Toys Robot does have this question mark image on the website that has a crystallized backdrop behind it. I thought about it for a while and I will say something that is obvious on what it is. A Spyro Into the Dragonfly remake. Now I know that you guys think that the game is crap, so do I. And you are all harping for a Skylanders return or at least a Trap Team remake. I, for one, love Trap Team more than a cheap Spyro crapshoot, but come on. It got purple, it got crystal dragons, that is more than I can say, everyone. No time to explain, I gotta go. This is Dash Wizard Storm Storming out. I got a mouse! I don't care.